Pastor going to preach some this morning. Is that all right? This is going to get into it. Go ahead and open your Bibles to Luke chapter 8. I'll be there in a minute. So there'll be a couple of scriptures before we get there. Luke, the 8th chapter, verse 26. Those watching online, we thank you for tuning in to live stream. Man, it means so much to us that people are watching. And again, I will get messages from people that let me know that they're watching. And it's really made for folk that live outside the, the blueprint that can get here. So it's good to have all of you in the house. Amen. Luke chapter 8. I'll be there in just a second. I, I love the simplicity of the gospel. In the gospel, Jesus came for two reasons. The Bible just explicitly says there were two reasons that he came to earth. The first one is found in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, where it says that he who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Now, I know some of you people say, well, Pastor, I, I sin, but yeah, but do you practice it? Do you, you know, I believe in the grace of God when it comes to this and the mercies of God, but you're not practicing, you're not doing what you used to do. Mm -hmm, I should have got a beggar, amen. Amen. So uh, is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. That's why he came, to destroy the devil's work. How does he do that? He does that through us. Amen. Through and us being full of grace and mercy. 1 Timothy 1.15 says that he also came to save sinners. Here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Paul the Apostle speaking. Now, again, this week I did two funerals, and one of the things I will mention when I do funerals is this. Uh, I'm a flawed man, and I think it's important for people to know that we're not perfect. Amen. We have not arrived. We still need help. Amen. I, so I, I love what Paul said here. He said, I, I'm the chief of them, man. I'm, I'm the worst. I know I'm the worst of what I've done. At least he felt that way. But he said, Jesus came to save us. He came to rescue us. And I do believe, be, hear me, that once you get born again, you actually are a saint. You, you know, you may not act like it. You may not wear the halo as well as others, amen, like Jamie. But the bottom line is, is that you are a saint. God has converted you and moved you over. Now, Luke chapter 8, are you comfortable? So now we realize Jesus came to do two things, destroy the devil and save sinners. Hallelujah. That's what he came to do, two things. Now, now when, it, when I do that, I, I never go up to somebody and say, you know, you're a sinner. I never do that. I saw a sign once that said, sinners are welcome here. That is one way to keep people out of your church. Amen? Because people don't recognize that. So you've got to allow the Word of God to check. By the way, happy 80th birthday, Sister Dolly Gant, 4th of July. Her daddy used to tell her the only reason there was fireworks it was because of her birthday. My, you had to come up feeling pretty special. Hallelujah about that moment. In Luke chapter 8, now we, we've read about this story out of Matthew. We've read about it out of Mark. But Luke the doctor, he adds a little bit more to it. As a matter of fact, if I backed up a few scriptures, I would realize that this is when Jesus was sleeping in the boat and the, it looked like the boat was going to capsize. And at that moment, the disciples wake Jesus up and he walks out and he says to him, peace be still. And it says of theirs, and he said to them, where's your faith? He asked his disciples in fear and amazement. They asked one another, who is this? Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water to obey him. Now we get to the shore. Everybody see to the shore. Now we're at the shore. And the scripture says they sailed to the region of the garrisons, which in one translation says uh, the Gadareans, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house. Let me tell you, there's an importance to have a home. He had no home, and he refused to wear clothing. We'll use the term indecent exposure. This is what this man's doing. Then it says, but he had lived in the tombs. Tombs represent your past. I, I like walking through cemeteries. I don't like staying in cemeteries. I like walking through and remembering the friends and the family and and the older I get, the more it seems like I got on the other side than I've got here. Amen. So I see that. But here he hung out among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times it seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot, 
and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into a solitary place. Wow, such strength. Snapping chains, running away. Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged him repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss or into the pit or, if you would, into judgment. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus, let them go into them. And he gave, gave them permission. Now, let's stop here just a second. A demon is a disembodied spirit. That's what a demon is. And demons are always looking for a body to go into. So they, at this point, they would even choose a pig over an abyss or into a dry place or to be thrown into judgment. Everybody follow where I'm going? There's a lot of theology mixed into this. Pastor Mike and I talked about it this morning, and the, and the unique thing is this. There are mysteries in the Bible that I don't have answers for, okay? Let's just throw that out there. I don't have all the answers. My daughter, Jill, was questioning me yesterday about something in Scripture, and I was excited to say, I don't know. And that's a hard thing for a preacher to say because most preachers want to act like they know the answer. Amen. But I don't always know. I do not always know the answer to certain things. But here, I, I, I'm picking up on a few things. When those ten and the pigs saw what had happened, oh, let me back up. When the, when the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. So they go into the pigs. The pigs jump over the cliff. It's the first case of swine flu. Verse 34, when those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off. And, okay, I'll go ahead and say it's also the first case of deviled ham. Okay, we'll just get that one out of the way. They ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who'd seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the garrisons asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you want to hang out with the cure? Hey, man, if you'd been demon-possessed, if you'd had cancer, if you had been sick yesterday evening, Tessa, Pat and Cindy Sharp's youngest daughter got married. My friend Don Nash did the wedding. But the beauty of the wedding was watching Pat Sharp walk his daughter down the aisle. And Pat being in the hospital for six months and would have died had not God. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Many of us, if we're not careful, we don't see value in humans. We see people that are drug addicts. We see people that are alcoholics. We see people that are struggling with, with uh, uh, sexual issues. And we, we, we say to ourselves, we don't have no use for them anymore. But you need to understand that child is somebody's child, has parents, has uh, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters, and they care. Amen. And when you care, things turn around and change. It doesn't mean that you're against the Word of God in any shape, fashion, or form. It just means that God rescued you. And let me just say this to you. When you've been forgiven much, you love much. And when you understand that there are a lot of things that you've been forgiven of that maybe the world doesn't know about it, thank God they don't. But God knows. You keep on thanking God, and you start loving other people instead of pointing fingers at them. Can I get an amen? Father, thank you for the Word of God. Change our hearts. Touch us on this Independence Day. We love you. We thank you for America. We thank you for this place. And, Lord, our prayer is that it stays free and that we'll keep having the freedom to speak the Word of God, that people would get saved, that the devil would be destroyed. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. God bless you and may be seated. You might want to say, God help the preacher today. There's a lot of places I can go with this, a whole lot of places. And the thing is, is if, it, if it's going to bother you, just pull your feet in. Hey, Ken, I love your haircut, man. It looks good. Hallelujah. You know, Joseph got one, too. I just, I like, you can always tell when folk get a haircut, can't you, Kenny? Mm-hmm. Amen. So the question, or maybe the title for this message, 
It's actually what the devil spoke out through the man when he said, what do you want with me, Jesus? Great question, amen? What do you want with me, Jesus? Now, let's reply. We'll, we'll say that, that the devil might have been the one that said that out from him, but it's a good question for the man to have asked too. What do you want with me, Jesus? It's a good question for you to ask this morning. What do you want with me, Jesus? Because I know that you are the son of the most high. When you finally receive the revelation that God uses you, even if you've been damaged, even if you have a, uh, let's just say my, my mom would buy groceries at times and get it real cheap when there were no labels. Have you ever ate labelless food? You know, the can was there, and it was like, you know, it was, it was like 10 cents for it because it didn't have a label on it. It's mystery. It's a mystery. There are times many of us, we, we seem to not have the label on us of what we've got and who we are, but yet God can use damaged goods. Can I get an amen? And to understand victory, understand three quick points here. First, God fights our battles. I, there's, there's battles that I cannot fight. There are times that I have to say I don't have the answer, I don't have the strength, I don't have the understanding. But what I can do is say, God, you fight my battle. I'm just going to praise you. I, this is how I fight my battles. Hallelujah. I just lift my hands and I worship you and say, God, you take care of that for me because I can't make that wall fall. I can't change their mind. But Jesus, I'm going to love you through this no matter what. Amen. So, God, you fight my battle. Second, well, after I do that, I've got to hush up. I'll say hush to keep from being offensive to many. But, but the bottom line is, well, let me just say, I got the wrong word. I'll get to hush in a minute. Suit up for battle. Get ready for it. Ephesians 6 finally says, be strong in the Lord. Stand against the devil's schemes. How do I do that? Amen. I put on the full armor of God. And third, don't be stubborn. Amen. Anyone you forgive, 2 Corinthians 2.10 says, anyone you forgive, I also forgive. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake. In order what? That Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. One of the greatest schemes of the devil is to keep you being full of unforgiveness toward others. Amen. And to hold unforgiveness. And when you hold unforgiveness, then you become a prisoner of the one that you are upset with. So he said, this is a scheme. Everybody say scheme. The scheme of the devil. The devil does this. He causes you. He puts, a, you know, you've heard that little thing, the little devil's on your shoulder. That's what you feel like. He's telling you, be mad at your mom, be mad at your dad, be mad at your brother or sister. Always hold unforgiveness toward them. And if you do that, he's got you, man. He said, so we're not unaware of his schemes. Now, at this point, we find that the, I would say the bruiser meets the blesser. In verse 27, said, when Jesus stepped ashore, as soon as his foot hit the shore, the devil started getting agitated, and there was a man who was demon-possessed in the town. Amen. He'd been this way for a long time. He had not worn clothes. Amen. He, lived in a, he didn't live in a house. He had lived in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, and he shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus? What do you want with me? For Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times it seized him. And though he had chained, he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon in a solitary place. Here's the problem. We don't always know what's a demon and what is medical. So we, we struggle with this. As believers, we struggle with it. There are times I've prayed over people silently and said, God, take that devil out of that person. And normally I'm prayed over one of my children. Amen. Don't look around. You are too. Hallelujah. Because you don't know if this is medical, if it's a seizure, what's going on here. But this man would do this. He is a finished product of what the devil's heart wants. He's been socially rejected. He's been in this way. He was damaged good. One scripture uses the term lunatic. Calls him a lunatic. Amen. A, a lunatic is mentioned only twice in Scripture. It literally means to be moonstruck, lunar. Amen. During the moon, during the full moon. And if you come up the way I did, you, you knew that during the full moon, that was when werewolves and vampires came out. Amen. As a matter of fact, as, as a nurse, I understand the nurses know that during the full moon is one of the rough, roughest times of the hospitals because people start acting up and acting out. Amen. So here, it literally means to be crazy, to take onto oneself, to raise the voice, to sell away, to keep the mind in suspense. It's the problem that keeps you wondering and keeps you worried. To be in suspense, to be uncertain, trepidation, to be in perplexity, anxiety, the fear of the unknown, to live with the feelings of dread. Let me tell you what Satan's dream for you is. Here's Satan's dream. Satan's dream for you is to be full of devils, have no clothes, no home, live among the tombs, amen, without any dreams, to be bound over and over with chains and estranged from your family. I'm going to say it again. Back that scripture up. 
Amen. That. No clothes. Full of the devil. No clothes. No home. When I say that, just this week, I mean, and, and when I say this, please don't take this as any shape, fashion, form of hatred. Because I have a love for people and a value for people, but our nation is changing. Amen. I just read yesterday and saw this big article about a man who thought he was a woman that went into a spa and exposed himself to children. What gives you the right, whether you be male or female, to expose yourself to children? Amen. But to fly under a flag of, of uh, transgender, there's no such thing as transgender. There's male, female, and cross-dressers. That's it. That, and that's all there's ever going to be. But we have changed our language, and if you can change the language, you can change the culture. Amen. So for you to go into a place and, and undress yourself, amen, in front of children, whether you be male or female, is, is indecent exposure. Amen. And if you've got a whole group of people coming out and standing up for you doing that, then we got some devils involved in this thing. So here we find what is Satan's desire for you, amen, is for you to be full of devils, to run around without any clothes, without any shame, with no home, live among the tombs, amen, to be bound over and over with the same habits, the same addictions, and to be estranged from your family. This is not the will of God for you, man. Amen. God got something better. Everybody say something better. He got something better for you. So the decree came out at this moment, verse 28, what do you want with me, Jesus? Amen. What is it you want? He, they said, don't torture me. Amen. Devils are afraid of an early judgment. Can I be honest with you? So are we. Amen. We want time to ask for forgiveness, to make sure our lives are right. You know, I, I, not only have I done two funerals this week, but I went to the hospital and visited with people who were dying. And the one of the things they want to know before they go, am I ready, Pastor? Do you feel like I'm ready? And I just say, do you love Jesus? That's the only answer I got. I'm not, I'm not over. The great thing for me in my life is I never have to stand in the place of God and say, you're going to heaven or hell. That's God. That's what God do. Amen. So I just stand there and say, man, if you love Jesus, you're good. As far as I know, according to the word of God, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Can you get an Amen. Amen. And it's up to God and you to clean yourself up and whatever that means for you. But they said, don't torture me. Amen. He asked him, he said, what's your name? He said, we're legion. Legion is 6,000. That's a lot of devils. 6,000 have entered into this man. They gave him such supernatural strength that he could snap chains, that nobody could hold him, that he ran indecently through the tombs. Amen. So Jesus says to them, they, 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 they asked the question. They begged him repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss or to be judged. There is a judgment coming. You've you, got to understand this. No matter what you think about politics and what's going on in the world and how you perceive people, this book tells me there's a judgment coming. Amen. That Satan and the angels will be judged. Amen. We're going to be judged. Uh, it, it's going to take place. How we've lived, how we've loved, how we've cared, how we've treated people. This here says that that's going to happen in our life. So however you look at this, you say, well, yeah, you know, because many of us, we got this thing about, you know, it's all going to be all right. <sighs> I want to stand on the side of being secure about heaven. Amen. So, God, whatever it takes for me to get right here, I, I need to do that. So they said to Jesus, a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus, let them go into them. He gave them permission. Let me say this to you. He did not demand the pigs, to, I mean the devils, to go into the pigs. But he, dem he allowed them. He gave them permission. Amen. You guys want to go into the pigs? Go to the pigs. So they ran off into the pigs. This is, you don't see Jesus telling the devil come out of the man. He just gave the bad spirits reasons to go. So they go over and jump inside the pig. The pigs run over the bluff and die. <laughs> now, here's the issue. Watch this. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank in the lake and was drowned. Then those tending the pigs saw what had happened. They ran off and reported it into the town. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found a man of whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people, and the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the garrisons asked Jesus to leave them. You finally got your son delivered from... Your daughter's finally doing better. 
And you look at him and say, I would rather hang out. When I read this, Frank, I'm disturbed of how people perceive what happens to a believer. When I got born again, my mom and dad didn't know what to do with me. It was one thing for me to be a drunk, but it was another thing for now me to be a churchgoer. My friends didn't know what to do with me because my old friends looked at me and said, hold on, you used to party with us, but now you're not partying with us. Now you're going to church and you're wearing a polyester suit. You're giving 10% of your money, amen, to the church when we used to give 10% of our money to the bootleggers. Something's wrong with you, amen. People struggle when people start getting right with God. Now, again, we all got to find our own way as we do, as we press into this thing, as we got to figure out, all right, Lord, what's, what's the best route? But the people said, you know what? We would have rather had him being we, we, indecent, running through the tombs, amen, full of devils. We knew where he was, but now this man going around talking about Jesus, amen, how Jesus healed him, how Jesus gave him a home, how Jesus put his clothes back on him. And the crazy thing was, now he's in his right mind, which tells me that he was in his left mind. Well, I mean, if you're not in your right, then you got to be in your left. Can I get an amen? What's wrong with America? The, the left mind. Okay, there you go. Amen. We got to get folk back in their right mind. Can I get an amen? Amen. Then all the people in the region said, they asked Jesus to leave because they were overcome with fear. They got scared. Amen. What is more scary to you? A man full of demons? Or a man loving Jesus. You know, I told you that story about this situation that took place in Los Angeles in California. One of the guys that got beat up was wearing a Jesus shirt. They were more afraid of the man in the Jesus shirt than they were in the man exposing himself in front of the children. That's too much reality, isn't it? Let's stick back to the Bible. Jesus promised in John 10.10 10, that Satan came. To kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. Let me tell you what full life is. Again, the question is, what do you want with me, Jesus? A full life is the right mind. A full life is having a home and a family. A full life, that, that's what a full life is, my friend. Amen. That Satan came to steal, to kill, and destroy. The King James says, the thief comes not but to steal to kill and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Barnes, I looked up what Barnes said about, about abundant life. They shall not merely have life, simple, bare existence, but they shall have all the, watch this, super added things which are needful to make that life eminently blessed and happy. Do you know what God wants for you? He wants to add things to you. Super added. Somebody say super added. I mean, super, what's that mean? That, that it's okay to be blessed. You are blessable. God wants to bless you. Well, you, you don't understand, Pastor. My life, I've been running through the tombs. I've been going back to my past. Amen. I've done shameless things. God, you don't understand. God says you're blessable. God says that you're necessary. God says that you're valuable. Amen. I came that you may. Satan wants to steal from you. He wants to kill you. Amen. He wants to destroy you. I want you to have life and life more blessed. Amen. In other words, it's okay to have a boat. It's okay to have a nice Dodge. It's okay to have good things. It's okay to be blessed. Just don't let anything come between you and the one that blessed you. Can I get an amen? Amen. Note the difference after the question, what do you want with me, Jesus? He was driven by the devil. Mm. I remember a song years ago, I, I let the devil drive my Ford. Whew. All of us have let a devil drive our vehicles before. Amen. Driven by the devil. Bound by chains, addictions. Mean and menacing. You ever been around somebody, you just don't know when they're going to manifest on you? When they're going to act up on you? Mean and menacing. Outcast in the wilderness. Again, naked, insane, exceedingly fierce, afflicted, which means cutting himself. He would cut himself. He would, he would hurt himself. 
crying, weeping. How do, how do, how do I change? How do I change? I don't want to flow this way with what's going on in the world. I, how do I change? If, somebody, if you ever wanted anything to say, look, guys, this is why there ought to be a hatred for Satan. Because he will drive you mad. He will bind you. He'll make you mean and menacing. But when I find him the next time after Jesus, the Bible says he's sitting at his feet. That's what Mary would do. It's a it's symbol of worship. Let me tell you what changed in my life. I began to give God worship. This morning, I got a text from a man that said, my daddy hugged me. My dad, this is a grown man sending me a text. My daddy hugged me. I haven't had a hug from my daddy in years. And he held me. And it changed me. Do you know the difference now with that daddy? is Jesus. Jesus changed that daddy, Donald. And he hugged his son embraced him I'm sitting at his feet not only am I sitting I'm free somebody say free you're talking about Independence Day I'm free now I'm useful and I'm helpful amen I can come out of the tombs I can help you he returned to his own house can you imagine when he walked back in that house that every time there was a knock at the door Fear grabbed mom and daddy. And they, oh my God, what's wrong with him now? I, you know, he come back. We clothed him before he left. He come back. He's mean. He's menacing. He steals stuff out of the house. He goes through. He pilfers. He looks for things. Hey, Amen. He's he's abusive. It doesn't matter how many chains we put on him. And then they hear the knock at the door, and, they, and they're scared. They won't answer the door. And finally, he says, "Dad, mom, forgive me." I love you. Jesus loves you. And the door opens and they embrace. That's the difference. The question, what do you want with me, Jesus? I tell you what I want. I want you back in your right mind. I want you clothed. Amen. I want you to go back to your family. I want you healed. I want you to go over the town and let joy reign. I want to close with the same scriptures I started with. What did Jesus come to do? He came to destroy the works of the devil. Let me say this to you parents, kids. Don't stand in the way of what Jesus wants to do. Hey, can you see them disciples? When they just saw the wind and the wave calm down. Jesus steps off the shore, and boom, here comes a man full of devils. What's Jesus fixing to do to him? He's fixing to turn him into an evangelist. I'm going to turn you into an evangelist. Have you forgotten your testimony? Have you forgotten what God brought you out of? Amen. You're an evangelist now. Well, I hadn't been to college. You don't need to go to college. You just need to accept Christ. Amen. Let him change your life, and then go tell. Then go tell. He came to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Amen. It all started with one question. What do you want with me, Jesus? Say it with me. What do you want with me, Jesus? Now say it to him. What do you want with me, Jesus? Well, I want you to go to Kentucky. East Tennessee. I want you to go to camp. I want this is what I want for you. I want you back in your right mind again. I want the chains of addiction broken off of you. Ain't nobody else can do I can do it for you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Lord, I believe even through the transmission of live stream, people are understanding and catching this. What do you want with me, Jesus? Only you and him can answer that question. What do you want with me? 
It's Independence Day. I want you independent of devils and dependent on me. Lord, I ask for a change in our lives and a love for people. God, no way would I discredit anyone because of their sin, for I too have sinned. I too am flawed. I too stand in need of forgiveness. But God, I can't stand and watch our children be abused and parents be abused and others be abused because people think they have a right to run through the tombs. To be indecent with others. God, help us stand for what is right in a world that's gone wrong. Put us back in our right mind. God, I speak to the minds right now. I rebuke Alzheimer's and dementia, the loss of memories that are so precious. God, I speak against every devil and demon that would try to inflict on the little family of the little country church. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. We send you back into any place, any animal away from here. Your judgment is coming soon. Love you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This week, you're going to ponder, what do you want with me, Jesus? You're going to ask that question. And I pray God gives us all the strength to do what he wants us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo, that's a sober sermon. I feel your presence, God. I feel your presence in this house. Whew, such a powerful question. And it had to come from a devil. What do you want with me, Jesus? Wow. Many are the mysteries in the Word of God. I don't have all the answers. All I know is to keep searching, to keep knocking, to keep seeking. Amen. God give us answers. Love people this week. Amen. Love people this week. Tuesday night, midweek service. Amen. Be here with Tuesday night if you can. Amen. Praying for your strength and healing. God is good. Amen. He's good. I'll, Donald, don't you worry. Another month and a half, college football will start. We'll be okay. We'll be all right again. Amen. And again, I thank you for your, uh, you know, when I see things on social, Melissa praying for you still, you know, these things I see, and, you know, we may not always comment on them, and, and, but we, we're looking. I stalk you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm checking you out. Hallelujah. I'm reading your stuff. And so be careful what you post on there. Hallelujah. Amen. If you uh, need a tither off an envelope that should be in front of you, amen. Your pure, good question. Lord, what do you want with me, Jesus? I want you to be a tither. I'll answer that one for you. I want you to be a giver, amen, to the kingdom of God. Now, I'm just going to say that a week from tomorrow, kids camp start. If you need to be sponsored, if your, your child needs to be sponsored, all you got to do is ask it. This is a benevolent, that's a, that's a big word I had to learn. Amen. This is a benevolent church. It's a given church. There are people in here that will sponsor your child to go to camp if you can't afford it. First, I would try to give as much as I could toward. It's a hundred bucks, a hundred dollars for three days and three. Is that nine meals? We're gonna give nine nine meals and two nights away. You can't you can't pay for daycare. I don't know anybody that would babysit your children. For three days and give them nine good meals and two good nights stay and teach them the word of God and let them swim and do all the fun they're going to have for $100. As a matter of fact, if I was an adult, I think I would pay that money and go myself. Amen. And be a part of sponsoring them kids. and be That's an amazing, that's, you can't get a babysitter for that. It don't happen. It don't happen. So let us be a blessing to your kids. 
amen, and let the gospel change their life. Make sure you sign up in the back. Get your kids, neighbor kids, whoever you can. We had daycare show up this uh, two weeks ago at camp, and a lot of them daycare mamas have been calling and finding out, for $100, I'm sending my kid to camp. Amen, I'm getting rid of my kids. I mean, I love my kids. I'm going to let them go to camp. That's what they really were saying. Amen. Amen. So if you got your envelope, everybody ready to give us. We'll give today. We believe in God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Amen. Here, y'all give David a hand. 